Imagine he's in a well. <laughs> you know about in a well, Andy? <laughs> he's really talented. <laughs> a lot of percussion. I mean, I do like it. I like the sort of... <laughs> He's in a wet. He's definitely in a wet. Yeah. He's got his little Someone MIDI machine to down there him. with him. Why did he fall down there with his MIDI machine? Are we being hypnotized right now? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're in that Willy Wonka tunnel where the light, the colors are all changing. Yeah. There's no earthly way of knowing <laughs> which direction we are going. Is this eight minutes? Okay, it's, it's fading out. And coming back. There's like a, a ten minute fade out, and then it comes back for a little bit, and then it fades out for about three seconds. I wow. mean, look, you know what it sounds like to me? <laughs> it sounds like when you're when you're watching a movie about the future and music from the future uh-huh. is playing in like that's a bar. In a bar, like yeah, a loud that's bar. Yeah. The, yeah, that's the representation. All the drinks of the, are blue the and there's smoke coming <laughs> yeah. out. And there's <laughs> yeah, and there's and there's like girls in cages that are like dancing like <laughs> yeah. to the music. This that was a deleted Kubrick scene. That's yeah. what this was. It was a deleted yeah. scene from Total Recall where <laughs> Arnold goes into a club <laughs> guys welcome to the valley cast that Hello. intro Hi. was sent to us by ace lanson and Thank it's you. called the valley know well <laughs> <laughs> it's called the valley cast intro me and a drum machine um, so well. thank you for well. that. Very well. creative, yeah. very wonderful. Thank you. Um, so today we have a very special guest. Special guest, special guest. Uh, one Mr. Nicholas Hamilton. Hey, hey, it's me. How you doing? How are we all doing? Are we doing uh, good? It's so good to see you, man. Oh, Nick, so good to see you guys. welcome back. To, well, not back, but welcome, welcome back, back to, to hanging us. out with us. Yeah. Welcome yeah. back to Just us. Just to you as a group. This yeah. is a, a, a sh- podcast from the Valley Folk where we all bring topics. Did you have, You don't have to Wait, bring Wait, I just want to say it, really quick for yeah. people who are like, who is this man yes, who's true. on this That's podcast? That's true. Great call. Not many people know Nicholas Hamilton. No, not many people at all. I yeah. don't know who you are. But those still. who do. <laughs> That's a very No one point. knows who you are. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody loves you. That's a new segment on our show. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows who you are. Um, so Nick Hamilton is the uh, he plays uh, Bowers, the Bowers bully, the, 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 the bad boy, the bad boy, the bad, in boy, the it in bad, bad boy Bowers, yeah, yeah. Bad boy Bowers. the mullet, Henry Bowers, yeah, the one with the mullet. It, that's well, I have to say that every time. Yeah. The, the one, one with the, the mullet. mullet. That's that's the one with the mullet. Right. People understand. The, leader the script that, actually uh, said one with the mullet. Yeah, I will. I will say I love that movie. The only critic that I mean that was not a subtle. Mullet. That was like this oh, guy has a so mullet. <laughs> it was. Dude, a, we you, all know that kid who had that mullet. Yeah, who, if you sure. were, in, if you remember, yeah, like that. At that era. was a yeah, mullet. But like, can I People be honest? Had that. Every mullet I've ever seen in any movie has always looked kind of gross to me. Just shaggy. It's always looked gross yeah. to me. Where are you going with this, buddy? But when Nick. Wore it, it oh. like looked good. You don't have to do that just to pure Nick sex. on this podcast. I'm you just don't saying. have to do that. I'm just saying. You don't have to play case. No, to I'm, Nick serious. His... <laughs> I'm serious. I'm like serious. You know, um, it, it looked going. good. No, Mullet's kind of like, I got a weird, like, I don't know where I stand on them. I, I grew up hating them, obviously. Like, the mullet you wear is obviously. In that film is it's um meant to is, be is horrifying. Hanging. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> the scary. You really part think of the it's film. horrifying? But, I think it well, looks here's perfect the thing. for the, mullets, the character. <laughs> mullets, I feel like, have kind of evolved a little bit over the past like t- like fifteen years. Where now it's kind of like if you have a mullet like well, all course, the way down, and then you s- your sides are shaved, and you have a little bit like I follow this account that's like Sergeant B- uh, Baby Button or something, and it's basically an English bulldog that has this adorable <laughs> um, mullet kid next to it. Sergeant Baby, Baby Button. Button. I'll find it. Hang on. <laughs> Fuck man! But you know what I'm talking about? Hello. Like mullets got kind of cool. I would like Theo I Vaughn. Do you know who Theo Vaughn is? Yeah, he has got a cool looking mullet. Mm. I no, don't know. I uh, I heavily disagree. I yeah, think it's man. a bad. I think it's a bad idea. I for anyone think. To do. I honestly think that the 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 way a mullet looks good based on the length of your neck. Sure. You're also in very many other things. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that too. But uh, n- but I love we love it so much oh, and. Sure. Uh, 
you're so good and you're so fucking terrifying in the movie yep. too yeah. which is so good that like that like s- s- scraping around in the leaves for for when when he's looking for the blade and he's his like dad's God, blade. Get up! and his eyes your eyes have tears and it's like holy shit it's also it's like scary now having known nick for about seven years when i see <laughs> the the film it doesn't i still don't feel like i'm you were watching there when he was born. i was there when he was born and um and yeah, I I still I don't feel like I'm watching Nick. I'm still like, oh yeah, no, that's that's Henry Bowers. Yeah, like the, yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, which speaks also to just like the the Andy. Well, because Henry Bowers is a real piece of shit, and Nick yeah. is a great guy. I mean, guy. Henry Bowers yeah. is yeah. There's differences. Um, I mean, <laughs> but I don't feel like it's Nick playing a role. Like if I watch like you know some movies, you like watch the person like oh well, that's that character or actor playing a. You person. know what? Henry Bowers needed therapy. That's it. He just needed therapy. He was he needed misunderstood. A, yeah, what he, was. he was misunderstood, and yeah. he needed therapy. He needed a hug. I, well, a, I don't know a about hug. a hug. A mental I hug. I mean, a hug might have a helped. Mental hug. A therapy hug. You weren't going to get a hug out of Henry Bowers, though, unless you were like alone. He couldn't receive him. it. He couldn't receive it. He wouldn't know how to receive it. I mean, it. he wouldn't receive it in public, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, well, the, the book goes further into his uh, physical contact. Yeah, that's the book true. is massive. Uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah, in, a, in a, sort of a more explicit way than anyone was it would did what would want ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like actually yeah. not necessary. Just yeah. really unnecessary. I mean, I love Mr. King, of course, but yeah, the, le- the legend, Who doesn't? the yeah, legend no, of that book. But, his <laughs> his books for me are known for. I read a fair amount of um of his stuff, and they're definitely always known for just reading a very pleasant. It's very like it flows really well, and then out of nowhere he'll be like, and then her eyeball popped out and blood gushed down her face, and it dripped. And Seventeen onto... people had sex with the hole. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I love sort of it. it I think it's I think it's just like incredibly creative and descriptive, and yeah, and King has always oh, I love been him. Yeah. perfect at that. Like he just just you keep falling down this well of like really well written shit and then mm. and then it's like so dark and right. you're and you're like how the fuck can like a macabre. human yeah. write yeah. that does he, <laughs> he's got to hold the record and uh, we could look it up and you got a googs in front of you does he I'll hold the record it. for most um literary adaptations to film or television he has to ooh that's an interesting question cuz everything he's ever wrote has mm-hmm. been well, let, yeah, let who, else could, into a who else could you possibly think of? Like um, uh, uh, Crichton, maybe is close. Yeah. A lot of Crichton. Uh, I think he's got Crichton's it up there for um, sure. Jesus yeah. and the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Nicholas. Okay, here we go. The living. You know what? Let's pray. Living... Jonathan <laughs> Jesus's Bible. Have let's you read pray it? on it. Let's pray. Jonathan on it. Jesus. <laughs> Have you read Jonathan, Jonathan Jesus's the Bible? Living, the the living authors with the most film adaptations. There's King. King is in there. Yeah, he's all me a dollar. He's the he's the man. He's he's got the biggest face. He's in this got to right? article. Yes, yeah, Stephen King. The uh, biggest face. Yeah. Just a lot of faces, and he has the biggest one. Yeah, he has a very big face. Yeah, yeah and, well, it's, no. and it's it's <laughs> yeah, it's thirty four. I just I yeah. He has thirty four film Crazy. adaptations, Jeez. and That's the insane. biggest one being not even a horror movie. The next highest is yeah. Nick, is, Stand by me. Uh, no, that's about to be the second. Shawshank. Green is Mile. Like, oh, also yeah. Green Mile. Yeah, yeah. most popular. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. God, I do. I do. Dude I do loves love Green Mile. My favorite movie. Green, Green Mile's your favorite of all time. It's oh, in my top so ten. Wow, really? Good. Cool. Love it. So Shawshank love is my favorite movie. Okay. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We're I like the that. same person. We're all the same person. But I'm younger and cuter. <laughs> I think I want to end the stigma. <laughs> I want to yeah. end the stigma of. Um, l- let's just let's start a movement. Let's start a new movement of stop. Being that guy that's like, you haven't fucking seen that shit. Yeah, I just like fuck that. you. Yep. Like, let's end that. There's too much of that. I much prefer people who go, oh, you haven't seen it. Let's watch it together. Yeah, now. yeah. Or like, you have, yeah. If you haven't seen, oh, it. oh. yeah, you're right. Are you back? Are you back? Yeah, yeah there he is. He's back. Oh, he's back. Hello. Okay. Oh. Sorry. 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 Um. Yeah. I just want to end that whole kind of like negative. Yeah. Like, oh, you're an idiot. Like, because then it makes people afraid to speak out about things they haven't seen or experienced, and yeah. we don't want that. It leads to yeah. a whole thing. No, so, you haven't seen Total Recall, but we will. But you have to see Total Recall. It's so good. <laughs> you turned it's... into one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck you, Nick. <laughs> uh, no, it's directed by Paul Verhoeven, oh. who who's directed like the some of the best shit ever robocop yeah. and it's madness. starship troopers it's arnold at his freaking peak it's like i haven't yeah. seen really many arnold movies the practical effects in it are amazing and they're bonkers i don't think i've yeah. seen any arnold movies no like, way wait what about Crazy. like no Predator? i saw uh what's the one with like all the jingle big manly all men the way. jingle all oh, the oh. <laughs> jingle. <laughs> <laughs> no no uh yeah what is that the one movie? with all the big manly men yeah, with the one uh, where it's... Oh. and bruce willis expendables oh, yeah. expendables i've seen that that's the only one i've seen 
Wow. Yeah. Uh, Different generation, man. Different generation. That's yeah. true. No Terminator, nothing like that? No. No, not Terminator. I mean, yeah, I figure all those movies for Nick's generation are old movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, like it's different generation movies, and like... different country. <laughs> okay, that's so true. here's a question. That's also true. What, what Nick movie... Nick is a foreigner. What, yeah, um, I'm, a foreign. I'm one of the foreigns. Yeah. What, <laughs> like, classic movie... So let's say... Let's just start here. You've seen Jurassic Park and you love Jurassic Park. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then let me go further. Let me go even... For the... Vis- for the sorry, for the audio viewers, that was made silence. <laughs> that was just So, silence. okay, so Jurassic Park. So let's... What's God, after... Steve, I was just waiting for you to just rag on him. You haven't seen Jurassic Park! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm trying to set an example. I've seen Jurassic World. Um, okay, Jurassic World. The first one is... I, I mean, I agree with everyone that the second one just isn't very good at all. Yeah, but the first one's fine. The first one's fine. The first one's fine. I, I, I love the second one. <laughs> Dude, I watched I it on a plane and I really loved, loved it. I just thought it was terrible, but I loved it. No. I was like, Look you, had a good, you had a good movie going experience. I really did. I had yeah. fun with it. You I would it never say it's a good movie, but I did. I did really enjoy it. And yeah. I also love Jurassic Park, though. A week ago, I think it was maybe two weeks ago, offhandedly, uh, Grace said she had never seen Back to the Future. And then wow. last See, that's night, out of nowhere, I go, telly. yeah, I, she like came out of the, a bedroom and I was like, did you say you've never seen Back to the Future? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, I said that like weeks ago. Why are you thinking about, And I was she... like, I'm not, I'm not going to make you watch it. I was like, but we're probably going to watch it. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. I mean, that's a thing that was even when television was still a thing. It was always on TV. Yeah, you yeah. could That's never really also escape. Interesting. It. Yeah, it's it's like so, my brother told me uh, over Christmas that this past Christmas was the first time he'd seen a Christmas story. And my Whoa. brother is five years older than me. Wow, and loves Christmas and Christmas movies. He's like, yeah, I just saw this movie. I just watched it for the first time this year. I feel like there's like, a what? There's an alternate dimension, or maybe even this current timeline, where I open a theater that's just like all it plays all the best movies like on a rotation or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like. F- Somehow it's free. It's like I just want people to see so these movies. You're talking about Netflix. No, but it's like a social situation. It's like everyone yeah. come Netflix to this. Netflix in a cinema. Yeah. Well, I don't want to invite people to my home. You know, I want. Yeah, Netflix in a cinema. It's like get your popcorn and whatever, and let's just watch these movies that like I know will make you feel something. Dude, your business is not going to last very long. <laughs> I wonder if you. Well, put we're gonna up... sell. We're gonna sell socks. Got it. <laughs> I Makes wonder sense. if you had a movie theater, if a movie theater took one of their their rooms and literally just charged the same amount of as a movie ticket, but you could go in a group and then you could just have control of Netflix and watch whatever you want on a movie. Oh, that's I wonder if people would pay like ten bucks to go hang out in a giant. Thing. Like, they like would, a, yeah, or just watch. A I mean, I YouTube fucking videos would. I'd have something. movie nights like that all yeah. the time. It was, uh, like a karaoke, like those Korean karaoke bars. Same idea, just like these small rooms yeah. with theater seating in them, like. 10 to 12 seats. Screening rooms. Big yeah. screens. Yeah. You can just go in and watch movies with your friends That'd and drink so alcohol cool. and shit. Um, yeah. I think this yeah. is a cool. really fucking good idea. Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah. I'm... I'm well, I'm I th- kind of like, I think why aren't they doing that? It should I... almost be like a, a like a fourth tier for Netflix rather than like a, a theater's idea. Yeah. It should be like a fourth tier. That's like an extra yeah. 10 bucks a month. Ooh, yeah, and yeah. you can go, go to into any theaters. theater uh-huh. at any point and take control of that theater. Yeah. Uh, with a gun, with and, a gun, uh, yeah, uh, 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 sort of at night uh, point. For, dude, that's what I assumed. For five hundred dollars, they will give you a remote, and then you can go into any regular movie theater, showing new movies, and you get to be the asshole with the remote and pause and you rewind, pause and it, yeah. fast forward it, pip screen it. Wow, dude, you that's some on, straight you up Joker I mean, shit. That's some, that's some some men want to watch the world burn. <laughs> <laughs> they also have laser pointers that yeah. you could just, mm-hmm. they're built into the seat. You can just yeah. pull it out and point them at the screen. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. I think at some point there's going to be, I mean, 3D was a, a crazy thing. What? Yeah. Just over 10 years ago. Yeah, and it's still that was insane. happening. It's still happening. Everyone was like, this isn't going to last. But I mean, like, the, the more you think about it, how is it? Uh, not a thing now that you'd, you'd have like a personal movie screen on the glasses? Yeah. yeah. And you can sort of you watch the movie with everyone, yeah. But you're watching your own movie, and you can rewind and pause and play. And right, right. Oh, almost like a movie. live stream that you could stop, but other people are still going, continuing yes. through. Mm. Wow. In a theater, how would they catch it up? How would they catch up? You though? wouldn't catch up. Some people would just some stay people just a little stays longer. in there for you have like oh, a I you see. have like a time limit. 
Like if you don't finish the movie in like five hours, then you could. You, yeah, you need to get you're home. basically talking about how to solve pee breaks in a movie theater. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Pee yeah, breaks man. and and concession yeah. breaks. I don't want to get, get up and stress. pee. I'm gonna miss this stuff. Yeah, it's a unique stress when it comes to peeing in movie theaters. Interesting. I, I I don't. I always am stressed out when I have to pee, and I'm like, yeah. I don't want to miss. I wonder if I that's missing... not a niche thing. I wonder if there's there's a there's a number of people, enough people that feel the same way you do, that would be a viable business. Business possibility. I still wouldn't want it the to be cut off from other people around me though, because I'd want to be like making eye contact and being like, "Oh, crazy." <laughs> yeah. Good <laughs> 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 uh, anyway. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, um, the, welcome uh, to the, the valley. I really everybody. think the, the future, <laughs> of, the future of 3D. I really believe is going to be glassesless 3D. Where you don't even have to wear glasses. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the screen is 3D. It's and the Why is not a thing yet? How is that not a thing? They're trying. They're are trying. They? And there are, there's different types of them that look pretty good. And at the last CES, which is like yeah, the know. biggest consumer electronics, you know, is CES. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically like they show off all the new electronics for people that don't know. And um, Jesus, what are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? I'm listening. I'm like, actively listening. I did. Um, I actively zoned out. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, I got... Joe, that's disgusting. <laughs> did you just... Joe. Hey, man, hey, sometimes yeah. you got to oh, get your Joe, rocks why off. are you always looking at your nudes? Yeah, why is that always your rocks off the way you get your, your own nudes? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hated that's that. what I was talking about. <laughs> the fuck was I talking about? Uh, the movies in 3D. In oh, the yeah, screen. 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so, even you checked out a little. Yes, yes. Because uh, I was so shocked at <laughs> what was <laughs> <happening>. <laughs> Just and The absolute tune I was out. focusing. I was with you. Thank you, Nick. You. Nick was there. Nick's a good friend. Uh, Steve, is it? It's Steve. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, Steve, Steve, yeah. Steve, yeah. <laughs> with an S. Um, <laughs> St- but Steve. yeah, I just think that's where, where that's going. And that would be cool. And I think once glasses 3D works then 3D TVs will come back. Because 3D Cause TVs that was a, thing. Oh, was yeah. a glasses, huge yeah. thing, but it all Short required lived. glasses. And no one could be bothered. And no one could be bothered, yeah. And and even you would go to the movie theater and get those like movie theater glasses mm. that you could like keep. Right. Some of the TVs use those, so you didn't have to like buy like an extra. Blue, like, no, not the red and blue. Things, the, or... It's the ones that are like gray. It was the ones that oh, would the like, actual come, ones. The ones that you would come in like a little wrapping paper and you'd pull it out. Yeah. And you put them on, then you could just like throw them in the trash. It's like going to Universal Studios. The, yes, the, the, ones the, ride, ones. Yes, yes, the ride ones. Yes, yes, like yeah. that. Yep. And uh, I really miss the the black or the blue and red. Yeah, Anaglyph. It was, it was Anaglyph 3D. Really? It was a visual thing that you could go. It was like, really? oh, that guy's watching yeah. 3D. Yeah, exactly. And wow. it had like, then you see people wearing Guy or girl. That guy or girl is watching 3D. Exactly. The problem exactly. is Sorry. that it's, loud women. it's Sorry. absolutely <laughs> awful for your eyes. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, is it? Yeah, is it really? it, incredibly awful. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's... Dude, yeah, you worked at 3D for a bit, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, what? I remember that. I worked at 3D. The yeah. company in 3D. <laughs> it was, no, it was called wow. in, three, in three. It was called in, in three. Yeah. yeah, dude, that was a cool wow. time because we were working on like King Kong. I remember my friend John worked there with you. Yeah, that's right. We worked together. It sounded. T- I'm glad you say it sounded cool because to me it sounded like a nightmare. These guys would painstakingly take every frame from a non 3D movie and with their hands in a computer 3Dify every make it 3D freaking frame. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like the old school Disney animation when they would layer the the things, you know, when the, it shows like yeah. the frame by frame. But I mean, worse. I can I, I can explain it in the yeah. simplest the way. Of we that, had basically. we had Wacom tablets and those pens, those yeah. digital pens, and everyone would get a f- get like a maybe like a three second scene, mm-hmm. maybe six seconds. And then you would just go frame by frame and you would just draw around every single th- everything on the screen became a layer that yeah, you would so have to like. Yeah, your foreground, your middle ground, your background. Everything. Oh, yeah. That little, that light pole in the background, oh. that fucking trash can. Did you f- feel like you got mindless during it or were you like hanging out with your friends? Dude, like, we would be the in these time? rooms with like six people and, and they'd all, we'd all be like laughing and joking. And yeah, I mean, we, we were just like fucking around on computers. Yeah. Doing s- this busy work where you could tune out. All day, so, like was, listen to music and stuff. Yeah, or? we'd listen to music. We'd listen podcasts. We just like fucking hang out. It's tedious as hell, man. It was tedious, yeah. but it was like rewarding because everyone had a pair of three D glasses at their desk, and at any moment you could press this button, and it would turn your frame into three D. Oh, cool! And then you could yeah. look at it, make sure it looks good, and then you turn it off, and you put your glasses up, and then you keep working, and then you could. Wow! Turn it. it was really cool. It was cool. it was that a fun a, experience. It's the future it didn't last very long. That that company died quick. Well, the reason why. It didn't last long is because they lost Steve Zaragoza to Source Fest. <laughs> Peter Jackson 
like specifically was working with this CEO, this guy, and I guess he was in the office all the time, but I never saw him. But Peter Jackson came and made a deal to make them. Man, I wonder if any of this is like confidential. And I shouldn't be talking about it. I don't know. Whatever. It was Pardon years me. ago. Basically, the, the, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get Nick to tell us the entire plot we'll get, of it too. Yeah, that's true. We're <laughs> coming up. Yeah. yeah. Um, Stay tuned. Basically, they like they paid this company to do, to make King Kong in 3D, and it was gonna release and be the first movie in 3D, um, in this type of new 3D. And then it was like screening really poorly, and people weren't liking it, and so. They completely trashed it. Oh man, that's oh, because sucks. Universal what? was like, "We're not paying for this. People don't like the movie. It's yeah. not good." I mean, if it, that's you know, we give the so people it, like, what they don't yeah. want. And then another thing was George Lucas came in, and they were like, "Let's make the Star Wars movies in 3D." And the CEO was like, "Yeah, we got to start with the originals: A New Hope." Empire yeah. and Jedi. Like, imagine that in fucking 3D, yeah. right? Yeah. And Lucas was like, no, we're starting with the prequels. Oh, yeah. And the CEO guy was like, oh, no. I, I don't oh, no. think that's a good idea. And Lucas was like, it's the only way I'll do it. Why? Oh, Lucas. <laughs> Oh, that's so it. fucking funny dude Lucas sounds he, like the guy at school who would just like everyone be having a good time and he would say something and he would just ruin everything you know what he did there like, yeah just kind of bloody George he, uh, I heard some good stories uh, about he, uh, yeah. I heard some good George. stories about him I'll no, tell he pulled you a off he pulled a Lucas he pulled a Lucas uh, he pulled a Lucas um, <laughs> <laughs> but dude I'll never forget the coolest thing about this place when Nick gets out of hand he pulls a Nicholas a, a Nicholas okay. I gotta go <laughs> um, one of the fu- but the coolest thing about this fucking 3D place was I didn't know well, so my friend worked there and then um, this was like fucking 2006 maybe 2007 my friend was already working there and he's like dude I can't tell you much about this place but they're hiring you want to come work here and I was like yeah I need a fucking job what is it and he's mm-hmm. like you're gonna love it come come on come audition or come interview or whatever mm-hmm. so anyway audition went through the in- first interview process then I went home they gave me a call and they're like can you come into our offices, sign a bunch of NDAs and stuff, and then sit down in this movie theater for like 15 minutes, and then we'll talk to you afterwards? And I was like, okay. And so they t- I did it, and it, they just sat me in a theater, didn't tell me what the fuck was going on. They gave me 3D glasses, these like weird glasses. And by the way, at the time, these this new 3D n- was nowhere. Yeah. No one knew about it. Wow. It wasn't even a thing that existed yet. And so they handed me these glasses, they gave them to me, and then they proceeded to show me scenes from like Star Wars, Lilo and Stitch, hmm. the Muppet movie, like fucking Titanic. Like they had they had like a reel of what 3D wow. movies would look like and it blew my fucking mind. Right. Cuz I was like this is the fucking future. I'm I'm going to be part of the future. This is the future of movies. Cuz they showed like Lilo and Stitch in 3D and it just looked I was I'd never seen anything like it. Wow. You know, it was like 3D that really like looked insanely good so you believed in the 3d movement like yeah right away yeah, yeah. and you never wavered d- during no the, no i love I've it always felt like it was sort of this understood thing of like this is a fad it comes and it goes and i've just never been i've been blown away by 3d one time and it really? was and it was <laughs> seriously and it, like it was supposed to be avatar and it wasn't avatar was good though I, the literally the only time that i've been blown away by 3d was entangled when the uh, the paper bags start floating up oh, in the yeah, air, yeah. I saw that in 3D, and that looked so amazing. It looked like they filled up the theater. My two year old daughter got up out of her chair and started oh, trying adorable. to grab the paper. Wow. That's adorable. The floating oh, paper bags. I know. I chastised her. She's here. a moron. She's but still it's grounded. Really yeah. Twelve years later, yeah. um, <laughs> tell her to take off the glasses. Oh, yeah. bye bye, Lane. But yeah, that's the only time I've I've always I thought hope it she was gimmicky. To this episode, <laughs> yeah. what a moron! My God. <laughs> I know it's so hated. Is it the Valley Book? She. Stupid. Knows that it's not real, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, that's the what thing. It's an absolute like, idiot. Like, does she think movies are real? You guys need to stop. <laughs> and I got some stuff I want to talk about after these reads. Okay, hey guys, let's talk about Eero. We're talking about Wait, Eero. Wait, let me pull up some music. We'll do it. I'll just get right into it. Wow, holy music. shit! Eero, okay. life's too short Jeez. for bad Wi-Fi. Everybody, we're talking about Eero and Eero Plus. Guys, the single router model just doesn't work for our increasingly high bandwidth world. It's simple physics, bro. Like, light waves, Wi-Fi waves don't go through walls well. Imagine asking a light bulb in your living room to light your master bedroom. It's not going to do that. that. Silly, you would never do do that. that. There we go. What you need is a distributed system. This is what offices have had for years. Not our office yet, but hopefully soon at considerable work and expense. 
with Eero, <laughs> you can install an expert an enterprise-grade Wi-Fi system in your home in just a few minutes. Simply download the Eero app on your iOS or Android devices, and we'll walk you through each step of the process. It's quick, easy, and painless. Current Wi-Fi routers are really tough to manage and optimize. The Eero app lets you manage your network from the palm of your hand, so you'll know how many devices are connected at any given point, as well as the internet speed you are getting from your service provider. And you can easily create and share a guest network. That's pretty dope. That's I like so that. Dope. Eero is protected with state-of-the-art WPA2 encryption, and because it controls the hardware and the software for your entire network, it ensures that you're always secure. Since traditional routers don't push software updates to their customers, they are left vulnerable in cyber attacks. Eero updates automatically so that you not only have the latest features, but the latest security at all times. Eero has incredible customer support, and that's dope too, because when you got problems, you need the helps. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That was a straight-on hand kiss <laughs> on my Holding knuckle. That, my friend. that was great. Uh, I, I just installed the Eero in my place, and I, you guys know that I have a horrible uh, reception. I can make calls now. I can, Whoa. I can surf. It's great. Yeah, I use Eero also. And you, my, it's great. My bedroom, why, for some reason, the Wi-Fi to my bedroom was so shit. Because of walls. Because yeah, I think it walls. is. I think it yeah. is because yeah, of walls. walls. And then I p- yep. put an Eero in my bedroom, and it's, it's like, uh, it's like, Perfect. It's yeah, it was perfect. one of the um, the few things we've we've gotten. They'll send us a thing to make sure that mm-hmm. we like it. And uh, the moment we came good. in, everyone was like, "Joe, take this. <laughs> yep. Joe, this is yours now." <laughs> yep. And it's great. And it's cool. It's cool looking. It's sleek. Anyways, cool. uh, Eero Plus is designed to provide simple, reliable security to defend all your home's devices against a growing number of threats such as malware, spyware, phishing attacks, as well as unsuitable content. The combination of Eero with Eero oh. Plus provides complete protection for your network and all the devices and those who use them as they connect to the internet. Like my kids who can't be seeing the nasty stuff. Oh my goodness. So, here we go. Uh, did what's our thingy here? There we go. Never think about Wi-Fi again. Get $100 off Eero base unit wow, and two beacons package and one year of Eero Plus. Holy crap. Visit Eero.com slash ValleyCast and wow. enter promo code <laughs> ValleyCast. We're getting some good... Uh, yeah, man. What, 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 what was that link again, Joe? That was, uh, that was uh, Eero.com. That's E-E-R-O dot com slash ValleyCast and enter the promo code ValleyCast. Wow. Get it, baby. Such a simple link. Get it, get you it. You know it's what, guys? Just, yeah, start entering a promo link. code ValleyCast on things. Get it. Yeah, Get it. Wow. I, I, it sounds like um, I need an, uh, an era. Joe, what do you got? What's your topic? What's your topic? Man? Well, I, I mean, we got to do. I want to talk horror movies. Yes, with Nick. Yeah. We, gotta, and we can start with it if we want and get some, oh, some tidbits. God, because, so oh. total recall. Because yeah, people are asking, <laughs> but uh, I want to want to kind of talk about what some of our favorite horror movies are <sighs> and things that like just totally scared the crap out of you as a kid growing up and, and the stuff you keep going back to and why we watch them. Yeah. I'll All start. That. Horror movies, baby. I'm going to start. It is probably my favorite horror movie. Oh, thanks, man. Um, that said, I don't watch horror movies. Uh, huh? It was all me. Oh, it was, yeah, absolutely. No, I made it. Um, yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that for for a second. Andy, what's his last name? Machete. Machete. Uh, oh, he's yeah, so great. He, it's I'm I love the guy. Um, so fantastic, excited. fantastic man. Um, and besides that, I remember um, the Grudge scaring the crap out of me, and I've never seen The Exorcist. I've never seen like The Shining. Um, I've never seen a bunch of that stuff, so I don't really have many. Many. Uh, did you see the ring? I did see the ring. Yeah, so you were into that like Japanese American and horror yes. Renaissance moment. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because that's when you um, that's when you were old enough to kind of like. Wa- that's your high school days. Want to yeah. see them and yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I like Cabin in the Woods, but I know oh, it's not really it's like so good. horror. It's yeah. kind of is it? Would you uh-huh. say it's horror? It's, like, it's, it's like yeah, yeah, it's fun. Um, I think that kind of movie it's very clever and fun, so I like that a lot. But yeah, that would be actually it would probably be Cabin in the Woods slightly above uh, it. I think. It's interesting you say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting Nick, sorry. that you say. That um that you had said that it was your favorite horror movie because it's 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 true for a lot of people right now because it what a lot it, of young people for sure yeah well and yeah millennials right. I guess and and I really think like it's because it kind of reintroduced horror to people in a way in the on the big screen in a big way mm-hmm. and in a way that actually fucking worked because so many horror movies just come and go and they're all garbage but it just like went rolling and everybody fucking loved it so to say it is your favorite horror movie is like not a weird thing to say because yeah. it was just it, it really is people's like introduction to horror right now right i think it's the type of um the type of movie too that's a result of like the age of entertainment we're living in where people like 
the people who are making movies now grew up on good movies mm. and so they're they're like taking all this stuff like it has heart and it, it has humor mm. and it has the things like make it a well-rounded independently good movie that's regardless the point that i wanted to make about genre. it because what i think you're what you're missing right now steve is that a lot of people contend that we're in the we're like in the midst of a horror renaissance and we have been with all these bloomhouse movies blumhouse movies blumhouse, and stuff that have been coming out it's back and it's that's kind of on the tail end of so bloomhouse brought it all back for watchable movies that are making a lot of money yeah um, the Annabelle series, all of those, um, conjuring. The conjuring, all that stuff, yeah. huge stuff, making a lot of money, and people love them. I don't know if you're Insidious into them or not. Was yeah, yeah, series that really popular. And that was right after I think people were getting a little bit burnt out on the the torture porn horror that we uh, endured for yes. the, the early yeah. 2000s. We're back to like the spooky was, haunted stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was Saw. It was Hostel. It was mm. even torture fi- porn. Even is what Final they Destination it. to a certain degree, kind mm-hmm. of. Is, yeah, but those it, are like, and I love them. Those but, could come back, and I don't know why they haven't. And I think they they would burn be, out for a bit, but they'll come back. But that's the, what I'm saying. But they like, need to come back now. So we yeah. had this like, and that was off of the tail end of the Japanese horror thing that we had which was right after the thrasher horror that we had of the late 90s mm-hmm. right which and before that horror was dead like it was huge I'd be in the interested 80s to look then... at like the correlation of what kind of horror is popular because they say in times of like national sadness comedies do really well and when the country's mm-hmm. doing really well like horrors you tend seek to do out really... the thing that you're not feeling. yeah the entertainment provides um, the thing that the that you lack but the but... point that i want to make about it that you're making steve and i do agree with is that uh I'm not saying those other movies aren't these things, but I'm also saying that they are like it was just you could tell the love in the heart and the money went behind it as well. This was a big movie. Yeah. And and a lot of those other ones feel still kind of independent and small. Yeah. This one a lot went into it. And I think that that really helped. with well, yeah, making it the, the Horror isn't a applicable. genre that gets a lot of money. No. And, and because you can make horror movies on the smallest fucking budgets and you could do those like mm-hmm. handheld found footage movies for even less exactly you know? and it had a nostalgic feel to it with the whole like almost stand by me ish nature yeah. of the kids yeah. it just said something for everybody and it was an accessible yep. horror film that like kind of brought people that wouldn't normally go to the theater to see a horror movie to the theater to see a horror movie mm-hmm. nick that, what are your thoughts you sorry i didn't mean yeah to I'm, not, I'm gonna take all these uh compliments and so sort of just just sort of bathe in them um, sure um, shower have a bath have a bath <laughs> um yeah no I, I completely agree i think having uh, a secondary part in it has allowed me to sort of see the outside part of it. I think having, um, knowing how much of a, how good of a job Andy did directing, I, I think being a secondary part and like so, sort of seeing it from you guys' perspective and outsider's perspective and critic's perspective rather than just sort of hire a minute, mm-hmm. this is me now. Um, I don't know if any of that made sense, but yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's... What do you mean by secondary part? Do you mean like in terms of... Like character, powers. like yeah, yeah, sort of not being. I think being in the losers' club and being Andy, um, yeah, yeah, it's it yeah. isolates you to sort of what, what the movie is, yeah, and where I can see, I can, um, I can, I can, I can see it from outside this perspective and what the movie is to other people, yeah, um, you're, not yeah. As, you're not as in the forest as right, yeah, and that's why that's I think that's why I respect it so much because I can see what it means to people, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because you're like a part of that, right, yeah, that's I'm, something you can say you are a part of, yeah. yeah. And I think Andy did just a stellar job. I, I don't, the, wouldn't, the movie wouldn't be the movie without Andy. I, I, I agree. I remember when uh, everyone was like, that fucking guy, the Fukunaga guy. Kerry Fukunaga, yeah. They were like, I even I was on that boat where I was like, fuck, I, that movie would have been so good. But then you read like things about like what he wanted and what the, he demanded to the be. The draft that he had, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, uh, that's not that's not good. Well, what kind of, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, about. he just got uh, well, real deep into Stephen King-ish oh, type stuff. It was really supernatural. There was... I mean the turtle. I don't know how much of this. The turtle wasn't can, in it. I don't, I don't think. I don't know how much of this you can put in, but it's so it's in Carrie's original script. Henry Bowers. This is all I know about Henry Bowers. He had intercourse with a sheep. Oh, uh, okay. And ejaculated on a birthday cake. Huh. Yeah. So yeah. That, that gives you a vibe of, and I'm pretty sure the right. orgy was in the orgy from the book. Is, yeah. Was in the yeah. 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 The new one they just made you do that in the audition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just it was in a hotel room. To make sure you knew how to get to the character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I that's mean, not uh, that's not very palatable. Yeah, and yeah. look, look, I I get the idea of making like a, a true to the book, like disturbing story version of it, and that's kind of a cool idea that it goes places that you've never seen a horror mm-hmm. movie go before. But like that's just not, that wasn't gonna be a hit it, movie. And it wasn't gonna make it. Just yeah, yeah it just wasn't. Money gonna wasn't be gonna, be, gonna be. I don't I don't know if it would have been even. It would have been hereditary style, yeah. But 
like less good. Yeah, exactly. Um, it really would have been. It really. really I think that's. Been. I mean, that's why Warner Brothers. I think ended with. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking out of turn here, but it's like it's. I think it's why uh, Warner Brothers said, N- "Piss off." Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. It was he's like it was not on the record. He's on the Valley Cast. I'm on the Valley Cast. <laughs> yeah, it's great. yeah, no, um, it's it, um, it's pretty well, yeah, common knowledge. They were just like, "This yeah. is." crazy we can't let you do this and he was like well i, I wanted to only do this and they were like okay okay bye, bye. <laughs> yeah we have a perfect an- uh, response to that it's uh, uh, good it's goodbye and, and the thing is, is like yeah. he made a fucking amazing show with it, true detective season true detective, yeah. one yeah. and it's like some of the greatest television i've ever seen yeah. and so it was exciting to hear about his it adaptation but yeah i'm so happy it didn't happen i'm right. so happy it didn't right. happen um, yeah i mean you wouldn't be ha- you wouldn't have the it, movie even yeah. close to what it is now. I right. feel like the, the new it is to the original it, the miniseries, what um, Heath Ledger's Joker was to like Jack Nicholson's yeah, Joker sure. in the sense of people just being like, there's no way. They're, 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 it's a classic and all that stuff. Like I, I feel like, like people leading up to the new it were so skeptical and mm. so yeah. just like, there's no way You're right. they can beat Tim Curry. And then, uh, and yeah, and then they release this movie and everyone's like, Oh, yeah, oh, no one's we, even talking about it anymore. Which is, that's like my yeah. favorite thing in movies that does happen now is when the consensus is so against a movie and then the opposite thing Which happens. Which Skarsgård is it? Bill? Bill. Bill. Yeah, I mean, it was originally, because it was originally Bill Pol- uh, Will Poulter. Um, who, Bill Poulter. Oh, that's right. The guy with the from, eyebrows. From Bandersnatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says yeah. I look a little bit like, which is... Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, I can but, see yeah. that. But yeah, so he's like, he was, so he was Pennywise with, in Carrie's movie. Andy wanted him. But scheduling issues uh, brought up, mm-hmm. um, but, which I'm also glad. And all, but all, all Bill Scars, yeah. And then the <laughs> most iconic thing yeah. in movies yeah. in the last couple of years happened. It's yeah. it's an it's a horror icon now. Like it, it yeah. I, and that character needs to be in the echelon of horror characters. Mm. And and yeah. and he was with Tim Curry's it, but like the character was the scariest part about that movie. Basically, yeah. like the first half of it is pretty good, and the second half is like don't even watch it. But to, to mm-hmm. watch it for Tim Curry, I'd say. But mm. anyway, but the point is, is that I think it's just we needed a new Pennywise, mm-hmm. and it and it's so good with Bill Scars. Theory Garrett. on it's the so fly good. here. Let me know what you guys think about Ooh. this. Um, the I, movie I, The Fly, also very good. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Um, the it was so successful and here I have a want to throw out a theory for why I think a lot of people might have flocked to this aside from the nostalgia and the fact that it was good yada 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 is there something about Pennywise this clown most people not wanting to probably see just a clown terrorizing people that's hard for a lot of people and a lot of people don't want to see that people are afraid of clowns yeah, yeah. but the fact that he, he has this almost like Freddy Krueger-esque way to appeal to everybody's fears yeah. and change yeah. and have like seven <laughs> makes or it eight. even fucking scary. but yeah you have seven or eight different types of monster that you're going it's to not watch not just a scary clown it's right? a scary entity that can take literally any form of anything exactly yeah. so you're like you, you you're not worried about just this one thing you're actually taking this journey to mm. to, to get mm-hmm. over a bunch of fears with mm-hmm. with a group of kids that you feel part of and stuff like that mm-hmm. i wonder if that has yeah. something to do with yeah it. it's like seven it's like you're gonna go through yeah or like the um yeah. go through those what things is each kid what's what's gonna just, happen which one do i relate the that's, most? i mean yeah. that's a hu- all of this is a huge testament to andy all the losers and i mean bill i think bill brought everything to that role yeah it was bill and andy's yeah. sort of uh Oof. passion piece was pennywise i mm-hmm. cannot wait to see the like Flashback Pennywise stuff. Yeah, mm. I'm dying yeah. to see it. I can't. Wait. I'm dying yeah. to see it. I want a whole movie about Pennywise in like the oh, 1800s or something. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be so fun. Oh. It's gonna be so fun. I, I can, mean, I cannot wait. That's for the thing. It's like, oh, September. Mm. Holy shit! Yeah. Is that wow. known? Yeah, September okay, six or seventh. Oh, oh, it's so even close. Even the, the trailer, I'm excited just to see the first like reveal of whatever. Yeah, that's like, oh yeah, yeah. that's We're gonna back. be I don't. I wouldn't. I literally, I don't know. Anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Neither Which is probably good. We. Otherwise, I would tell you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Warner so Brothers know what they're doing. Uh, Nick, what is your favorite horror? Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, the favorite horror? Do you have? Do you like horror? See, Did you like horror? Do you I, see, I don't do you really like you watch to... horror movies. Like it's, I'm, I'm, I mean, and this is going to be a huge flex, but it's like it's being in the biggest horror movie of all time and not being a fan of horror. <laughs> yeah. Huge flex. Yeah. Yeah. Is huge. Well, flex. we're the biggest YouTubers, but well, you know, I bet we would all love. We, like, you know, we get we get criticized YouTube sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Right, that's do, do, do all the like horror blogs and horror networks and horror magazines when they interview you are they like, come on, man, <laughs> you don't like horror movies? It's often there's there's more there's more shock in. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, why would you like getting scared? Is the issue with me? 
Like that's okay. It's, yeah, it's the, I don't I mean, get it. It's dopamine, right? Yeah. But why is why like, do it to yourself? Because do little, something that makes little, you happy. Little yeah. adrenaline you freak. Pump, yeah, little, I think yeah. it's because it, it's fun. It's a desire to feel it's, alive, it's fun maybe. Is to it? do for me, I love horror movies, so it, I think it's just fun. That makes sense. It's fun to yeah. see. <laughs> Look at you. Like <laughs> un, it's fun to see unbelievable shit happening in on a in a movie, especially yeah. like when it's like blood and guts, and it's so funny, and you're just like having a good time with your friends. And yeah. It's all fake, and it's made by these amazing masters of yep. special effects and makeup, and yep. there's just a lot of love that goes into these things. And the scary, like I get more scared. Of I haven't been scared in a movie in a long time. Okay. I think Hereditary. Hereditary was, got me a little. Bit. I was nervous in Hereditary yeah. because of what everybody was saying, but I just ended up being kind of like. I mean, the end is some of the visuals in that stuff. The, the visuals in the end were definitely yeah. some of the like craziest shit. But yeah, um, I would never see that in my in uh, like three lifetimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, I have no desire. I, do, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, like I guess it's kind of like going on a roller coaster. Yeah, I was gonna say because right? you're you're building your emotions up and you you have these huge spikes. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, roller then, and, then, and then at the end, someone dies, and that's, like, that's, <laughs> yeah. and hopefully it's, it's a roller coaster that the middle, every single time it goes around, the someone is dead. <laughs> yeah, the difference is after I get off of a roller coaster and I'm going into my house at nine o'clock that night, I don't think a roller coaster is gonna <laughs> jump out of the bushes. Yeah. And and eat me. Yeah, exactly that. That's okay. exactly that. But besides um, that, it's exactly the same. Yeah, thrill the, seeker. I mean, yeah, the imagination is a is a powerful thing. So yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, is my favorite. The Dream Warriors, yeah, or just not, Nightmare on Elm Street. No, I'm not even out. The franchise is my favorite okay. horror stuff ever. Oh. Like I said, because it's just it's creative. It gets silly as the uh, so full as it goes on, and then it, it's it. Freddy Krueger is a nightmare. Yeah. It's like a straight up Absolutely. nightmare that ends up they having so much fun with him at the end. It's some of the most creative kills. In cinema oh, yeah. history, dude. It's my so friend cool. Jeff cool. and I used to like come up with, w- yeah. with some. Like we'd be, I was like, we. I thought of a really funny one where you're like asleep and you're walking around in your living room, and then suddenly like you're like tired and you take a seat on the couch, and then the ca- the camera pulls back and the couch starts to like turn into the striped sweater, mm-hmm. and then at the very end there's like a Freddy, yeah. like full Freddy sitting on the end of the couch and he's like, have a seat, yeah. <laughs> and then this the couch opens up <laughs> and just eat, yeah, exactly. What is brilliant about the movie making a bit like like capabilities and a, like moments that can be made in that series are great because. It isn't just watching people die in creative ways. You mess with the audience. You some, you don't know if somebody's in a dream. Either, so there's cur- there's these curveballs that just take you, like keep you off kilter Absolutely. as a viewer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't think you get that in anything else. It could do it a little bit because um, you never know what's going to come around the corner. Yeah, because it could just but be, be anything. But you don't know when yeah. you're watching A Nightmare on Elm Street if it's done well because a lot of those movies aren't great, but they're fun. Is that you don't know if you're in what's real and what's not. Yeah. It's great. It's yeah. like, when does the simulation start? Hey guys, what's up? It's time for a little break within uh, this wonderful chat we're having with Nick Hamilton from IT. We wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about one of our favorite sponsors, Squarespace. Hmm. Joe, you love Squarespace. I love Squarespace. They let us make websites. That's right. And our friend Mike Falzone has a Squarespace website. Not to give him a plug. But you did. But we love Squarespace so much because it's so easy to make a website. Gone are the days where you were like, man, I don't have the skills. I don't have the knowledge. I have no idea how to start a website. And Squarespace just helps you with every aspect of that. They make it so dang easy. Let me throw in some buzzwords here. Domains. Mm. Websites. Buzz. Online stores. Marketing tools. Guys, these are all of the different things you can use Squarespace with. Or for. for. (laughs) and they've got their new feature which is email campaigns guys this is very excited their email campaigns are consistent powerful it's content from website to email powerful editing tools to make it your own customizable layouts for any message mobile editing so you can send anytime anywhere and how about some of these other things you can do with squarespace like turn your cool idea into a website showcase your work Ooh. blog or publish Ooh. content sell products and services mm. of all kinds promote your physical or online business announce an upcoming event or special project and those new email campaigns which we love so, so much you can do 
when you make a website. And Squarespace does this by giving you those beautiful templates created by world-class designers. You don't have to worry about the look of your website. It's already designed by world-class designers. Talented people letting you do talented things. And not only that, there's the beautiful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell anything online, the ability to customize the look and feel settings, products, and more with just a few clicks. Guys, and you can do it all from your phone if you want. It's all mobile optimized. Hey, welcome to the future, Steve. How are you? Dude, I'm great. You look great in the future. Thank you. As do you. Thank much you so much, than Joe. You did in the past. Thank you so much. So, guys, this is a no-brainer. But you can go to squarespace.com/valley. That's squarespace.com/valley for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use that offer code Valley to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Don't be dumb. Get on that Squarespace train. Go to squarespace.com/valley and check it out. Make anything you want, everybody. I'm gonna look at five things in this room. You can make a website about it. Drum, ET puppet, not ET puppet. Me and Joe and future Joe and Steve. Go do it today. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Joe. What do we got next? Uh, da, 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 boom! If Natural little transition to press play on a track. <laughs> Mm, I don't like this one. How about this one? Yes. I like that one. Me Maybe, too. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about Quip. Ooh. One of the most important things we do for our health every day is brushing our teeth, yet most of us don't do it properly. That sucks. Yeah, man. <laughs> that totally sucks. What a scary stat to hear. Yeah. Quip is better, the better electronic toothbrush created by dentists and designers. It was designed to make brushing your teeth more simple, affordable, and even enjoyable. Yeah, I love my Quip toothbrush. So do I. I like, have legit. one. We both have one. I think everyone here has one. Mike yep. Falzone has one. Yep, Sorry yep. to mention Mike again in another ad, Joe. Yeah, well, how can we not? He's part of the family. And he uses Quip, so why not? He's part of the Quip family. Sensitive sonic vibrations. These gentle enough, they are gentle enough and they are sensitive to your gums. People brush too hard and some electric toothbrushes are too abrasive, but not Quip. It's got a built-in two-minute timer and it pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides, helping guide to a full and even clean. It sucks when you're like on your top left for way too long, you know? I know. Don't stay on your top left too long. 90% mm -mm. of us don't brush for a full two minutes or don't clean evenly. Quip helps you do that. It's got a multi-use cover. It mounts to your mirror. I love that one. I use them. I now. know. It's like it a future great. toothbrush. And you it just reminds you there. to brush your teeth Yeah, yeah. It's just and it there. looks cool on the mirror. It, it really does. It does look cool. Look at us gush. This declutters your sink or cabinet and makes traveling with an electric toothbrush even easier. Quip doesn't require a clunky charger and runs for three months on one charge, which is insanity. Can we get that battery for everything? <laughs> <laughs> I know, serious. Uh, the brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist recommended which schedule love. every three months for just five bones. Why? Three out of four of us use bristles that are old, worn out, or ineffective. Quip is one of the first electric to toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association and has thousands of verified five-star reviews. Yeah, that's what you want. Yes, you do, baby. So say what you love about Quip is what it says to me. I think we did. We said a lot about of course, what we love yeah. about we, Quip. We, I, <laughs> we it's use the it. <laughs> it's the only thing that is consistently in my mouth every day. Yeah, man. I, I made the switch from uh, our insurance, not to get too uh, uh, personal. Our mm -hmm. insurance also gives us free electric toothbrushes, and that thing's in the garbage. No, it's bad news. Because I have a Quip. Nothing's better than Quip. There we go. It's backed by over 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at just $25, and if you get... If you go to getquip.com slash valley right now, you get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack for free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash valley. Nice work, Joe. Um, Steven. Yeah. Speaking of teeth, let me hand you that phone and you go into that one last uh, oh my goodness. segwayed ad read to what Candid. Do here? Oh, let me do this. Do, 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 do I have any more? Guys, we're going to make love to your ears and your mouth on this podcast. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that's a good one. That's fun. That's fun. Hey guys, have you ever had problems with your teeth that you've always wanted to get fixed? I have an option that can help. You won't need to go through the hassle or long-term treatment of wire braces, and you can do it from all from the comfort of your own home. Dang. It's this new company called Candid. Now, buckle up, Joe. Here's the scoop. Click. Candid is helping people gain confidence through accessible and affordable orthodontic care. Candid makes the process of straightening your teeth convenient and easy by having the customer take the process into their own hands. 
And even though the customer is taking the process into their own hands, Candid's network of highly trained orthodontists review each and every case and directs the entire aligner plan. Well, God dang. Guys, you can focus on straighter and brighter teeth in an average of six months and costs 65% less than braces. That's significant. That's very significant. <laughs> Each aligner purchase includes Candid's premium whitener. Everything you need to make molds, take molds of your teeth from home is delivered to your home. White glove customer service in addition to email and phone support. Candid will set up a video call with you to answer any questions you have and to walk you through the modeling process. That's top-notch customer service. Candid only uses experienced orthodontists never general dentist so here's the details guys candid makes custom clear aligners that are sent directly to your home each treatment plan is customized specifically for your needs to help you straighten your teeth these aligners can fix crooked teeth crowding and gaps the first step is to purchase their starter kit which will be sent to your home so you can take impressions of your teeth and that kit retails for $95. That sounds like a good time. An orthodontist licensed in your state reviews your specific case and creates a 3D preview of what your treatment and final results will look like. Once your 3D preview, once you see your 3D preview, it's completely up to you if you want to move forward with your clear aligner treatment plan. Having a real orthodontist is the main reason you'll love Candid. Other companies use dental professionals, whatever that means. Mm -mm. Seriously, it could be anybody. Mm -mm. You can also talk to a real person at any time if you have questions. Candid's treatment time is an average of six months and will literally save you thousands compared to the other guys. So guys, you're just one step away from getting straighter, whiter teeth. Take mm. advantage of Candid's risk-free starter kit guarantee. Plus, when you use our dedicated link, candidco.com slash valleycast, you'll save 50% on your modeling kit. That's candidco.com slash valleycast mm. to get 50% percent off the price of your modeling kit candidco.com slash valleycast do it for your mouth i'd like to thank all of our sponsors uh today um what you should do is get that candid co straighten those teeth keep them clean with the quip make a website about your clean clean teeth with squarespace your journey yeah. uh, make sure you're able to do that by using your kick-ass wi-fi from euro.com thank you guys for this moment within the podcast for some ads and now back to the main show all right, can I talk about one more thing before we get out? All right, so this morning I was, you know when you like, you hear a song from your childhood and you're like pumped about it and you get into it, right? Yeah. That happened to me today. So I started listening to some Incubus. So oh, Incubus man. came back. Still love them. I listened to their recent album, Eight, came out in 2017. It's got some bangers on it. Wow. Check it out. Now, do you remember the crossover hit they did with Big Pun, I Don't Want to Be a Player No More? Mm-mm. So they did this for for an album called This Rocks, I think is what it was called or something like that. It was rappers and like new metal combined to make songs together. Okay. Right? Where so, where, what kind of, so I listened to that. What street are you taking this down? So then there I went we go, to, and I listened to the normal version of I Don't Want to Be a Player No More with Joe and Big Punisher. And I just want to talk about a lyric that really stuck out to me. Okay. I'm excited. So I'll... Uh, let, okay. me, let me just give you this verse really quick and then great. I'll, I'll stop after the lyric. Okay, great. <clears throat> hey, yo, I'm still not a player, but you still a hater. Elevator to the top. Ha ha. See you later. I'm gone. Penthouse suite, penthouse freaks, in house beach, French countess, 10 thou piece, rent out lease with an option to buy, cop and a five, <laughs> oh, Benz, for when I'm not far up in the sky. Puffing the lie from my twin Zito up in the Benzito with my Kiko from Queens, nicknamed Perico. Now back to the PAs and wearing PJs. Now we're reaching peak age, <laughs> running trains for three days. Who want a ride? It won't cost you a dollar, whether soft or harder. Of course, you're still going to holla. My, my, I'm big, huh? I rip my prick through your hooters. I'm <laughs> sick. You couldn't measure my dick with six rulers. Can we talk about that? <laughs> you couldn't measure my dick with six rulers. How big is this dick? Well, you don't have enough arms. You, you can't hold all Nick. those rulers Dick's together. Gone, yeah. Nick, how big is this six ruler <laughs> dick? <laughs> well, let's bring an ET really my quick. My mother's going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know. But I, I no, love it's it about, all the same. It's That's about, a good rhyme, but good Lord. No, it's about well, somebody who hasn't just bought a tape measure. Six rulers. If you have six rulers, That's you should have point. a tape measure. I mean, it's uh, can I just be honest? This guy, is, this guy is sick. I mean, no, I think he's what we would call a braggart. And... Um, a hooligan, maybe? Maybe, yeah. And None I think of this and is perhaps, hyperbole. This is all fact. I don't think it is. What inspired you? Do you think he has an indoor beach in his penthouse? Is it kind of fun to listen to when you listen to it? Oh, it's, it's a great fun. song. Really? But you couldn't measure my dick with six rulers. Do you think he has... Is insane. Do you think... Um, let's get Nick's mom on the line. Uh, do you think, <laughs> let's call her and see what hey, she uh, thinks. She'll answer. <laughs> do you think... Wait, wait, wait. He said, <laughs> he, had an indoor, he, said he had an indoor beach in his penthouse. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you're going to believe that he needs six rulers to measure his phallus? Oh, man. That's a good point. No man has a beach, indoor yeah. beach. For a little sample of water, a little indoor beach. Oh, no, no, that's not an indoor beach. You can't have just like what, like five feet of sand. Put a sand put a little sand, put a little puddle. <laughs> I mean, at who the terror wants a beach? of the ocean? Cut yourself. A Nobody beach. wants a beach I can't indoors. Wait. The then ocean's I have a, terrifying. I'll it's have a glass an of water in a sand then. castle. We should all have indoor beaches. Ah, uh, well. This One is day, our company. Man. That's fair. Uh, Keep growing that Patreon. <sighs> all right, guys. Well, listen. Let's not waste any more of Nick's time. I love. Oh, from butter pecan. you never, you never waste my time. Steve Zara goes up. Such a sweetheart. To Nick. 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 I do want to. I do want to. I do want to shout out some. I've always because I've never been on YouTube before. I regulate everything. Wow, this is your first time on YouTube. And it's also my first podcast. Holy shit. No wow. way. So there's a couple. Of, I'm so sorry we talked is, so long about Total Recall. No, I love it. I absolutely love it. You it's exactly how I thought my first time would be. <laughs> um, yeah, shout out to all day. So it's basically, it's just, it's just yeah. channels that I've always loved. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Do it. Love. Dude, People. one day when you're, when you're winning an Oscar and you're on TV... I am going to tweet out a photo of you and go, this motherfucker w- went on our podcast for the first time. We were his first podcast. Give us our Oscar. I'm going to feel so proud of you. Oh, you're going to make me leak. Oh, oh don't mm. leak here. I'll leak all mm. over you. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> that's sweet. Uh, anyway, uh, so Did you guys tell him I'm into golden showers? I, I, Let's I, listen to Nick talk. So there's, Nick's mom's <laughs> listening to this. There's a, um, so there's a, a channel. This is based on what we were talking about before. Uh, it's a channel who does, I can't remember the name of the channel, but the series is called Kill Count. I don't know if you've heard about this. Yes, I have. Well, yeah. Let's bring it up. Hold so on. Let's see if we can find the channel. So basically, it's this fella, and I think it's just him, where he basically takes horror movies and yes, I've seen counts that. the kills <gasps> and like shows the kills and like rates the kills and yep. stuff like that. Wow. And that's the only way I watch horror movies. I watched I've that. Watched, wow. I've watched all the Saw movies through him. Through his videos. Right. Is it Dead Meat? Wow. But have you actually Dead seen Meat. the Dead movies? Meat is the channel. I've never seen any of the movies. The only movies I've seen... This the is how you learn about them. This is how movies. I sort of... I get the gist of the movie. Are there clips cool, cool. in the yeah, videos? The whole, yeah. the whole movie. Like it's, wow, what it, a it, it, chance. That's a service he's doing for this... For this. It's incredible. He did, like, did one for it. You know the That's subreddit the Data is Beautiful? It, reminds, it seems like something that would be on Data is Beautiful or Data Ooh, is Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that guy oh, yeah. I mean, because I love statistics. Uh-huh. Like, does fun, statistics yeah. know, is my favorite does he know that that's what you that, that you watch his stuff? No. I mean, I, well, I don't know. I probably this guy give is a shit. swimming but, in hits. Um, yeah, he's, he's making a lot of views every... Because it's just very good yeah. content. He basically... Because he has like a blurb at the start saying that he doesn't own these movies. Yeah. Because he got in trouble a couple of times. Saying because he used to start out, I own these movies. I, right? yeah, yeah. He had to stop saying that. <laughs> I made these movies. These movies are mine. Uh, Universal. Uh, you're welcome. Enjoy my video. <laughs> F off. Steven Spielberg sent him a handwritten letter. Please stop saying you own my movies. <laughs> uh, that's literally. So he just he just shows like clips of the movie. He basically goes through the whole movie, and it's all the important bits. Yeah, I'm down. I'm wow, that's out. wonderful. Yeah. But also the kills, and like he goes at the end, like how many. Uh, men were killed compared to women, and like does like a pie chart. But in that, you see scary stuff too. Is that okay? That's my. But that's that's all. That's I'm the okay barometer. With. That's of the... all I'm okay because if okay. I sit if I sit in a dark room, you don't yeah. like that it tension to, that builds. It has up. to be daytime for me to watch a kill count video. Right. It has that to makes be daytime sense. and it has to be bright and it has to. This be, is like my girlfriend, and I and I have to be with a, a, another human being. Yeah, this is this is my girlfriend. Alana cannot watch a horror movie. Me and Alana can just hang out anytime. Yeah, well, we'll just watch horror movies in the daytime when we watch them. Yeah, oh, good. With you, Nick. Good, good shout over. out, Nick. Yeah, it's a good shout good out. Shout uh, out. Then the the only one more, which is completely unrelated. There's a, Brad's but, but it's because Brad's it's it's. The Valley Vogue Patreon.com slash The Valley Vogue Patreon.com slash The Franco Show. They sounds like the voices in some of my head. Whoa. Um. So it's a sketch channel, but it's an Australian sketch channel, which mm-hmm. is rare. Um, and I bring this up because you guys are very similar to them in the same way comedy. Um, okay. Chris Lilly is the only funny Australian ever. You need to watch a <laughs> channel. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fuck you. What a good phrase. Uh, uh, Absolutely fuck I have you. No, exactly what to say. Oh. <laughs> so there's this channel. The name is Auntie Donna. A-R-T-E. Auntie, uh, Auntie, okay. Auntie, Auntie Donna, Auntie Donna. Uh, um, so there, it's Australian sketch channel. These three guys, and I'm blanking on their names: Mark, Zach, and Broden. I've been told about these guys. Mark, yep. Zach, and Broden, and they are yep. cool, freaking fantastic. Oh, I can't wait! And then yeah. you guys, in a nutshell, so the people who watch this podcast, They're older, ugly folk like us. Yes. Oh, thank God, more olds. But I, I love them to bits. Every single video that comes out, I am. It just makes me so happy. Oh. The people who watch. 
the Valley Folk will love Auntie Donna. Oh, wow. I can't Search wait. Search them up. You will love them. Cool. I'll show you a video after this. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. My favorite people on YouTube, apart from the Valley Folk. Wow. Thanks, well, thank you. Well, that's a wonderful plug. I have seen some of the stuff. It's good stuff. It's very good yep. stuff. Um, we actually, yeah. we have time for one more plug, guys. Oh. Um, this comes from, this is a Patreon perk, part of our Patreon oh, perks. Um, our highest tier has the option that if you uh, uh, would like to, we can shout out certain projects of yours. And we're doing that right now. And if you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash the Valley Folk, because that's how we're able to do all this fun stuff all the time and talk to Nick about horror movies for a long time. It's where Patreon, it, what was that link again? Premiering. It, yeah. To, Did yes. you say Patreon? What was Patreon. it? Patreon.com slash the Valley Folk. So, <laughs> switch. <laughs> this particular uh, project, creative endeavor, comes from Alex Krups or Krups. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong, Alex, either one. Uh, and he says, Switch to Black is a Canadian based high energy rock trio playing their own brand of grunge slash punk rock, if you guys happen to enjoy music, cool. influenced by bands like Nirvana, Queens of the Stone Age, and Green Day. Switch to mm. Black started Queens in 2012. Of the Stone Age is and they've since released two EPs. That's cool. Nascent Noise in 2015 and Switched to Black in 2017. I like when the self-titled comes after the uh, comes after the not self-titled. That's fun. Their music is available on Spotify, <laughs> iTunes, <Jesus>. and Bandcap, <laughs> Bandcamp. And if you want to check them out, try listening to the new LA or I Know What You Did Last Summer. Thank you for your time. That's from Alex, who is also a Valley cast uh, and Valley folk listener and supporter. And thank you yeah, guys, uh, to check him. It out. And thank you to also all yeah, of our that's a, that's a big round of applause. What's the name of the thing? band again? Switch to Black. Switch to Black. Available Switch on Spotify. Black. Cool. Switch. I'll Switch check it out. Black. I will listen to it on my walk home today. Lovely. Oh, it's such lovely. a lovely walk. It is such a lovely walk. It's, it's, it's a lovely, it's a lovely weather walk. It's a beautiful day. Have you seen all the butterflies? Have you seen all the butterflies? There's all the butterflies. There's all the ladies, I think is what they're called. And they're actually ladies. You couldn't measure my dick with six rulers. You couldn't measure my dick with six rulers. You couldn't. It's an excessive amount of rulers. So we cut like a while ago, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Nick, ago. for being on the podcast. Yay! We love you so much. We Thank gotta you have much. you back a hundred million times. Oh, can we all the time? Yes, please. I'll be. A, I'll be the new Lee. Actually, whenever one of us can't do it, will you just come in for us? Yeah. Great, great, perfect. Oh, yeah. See you next week. I'm taking Thursday. That's legally cool. binding. Sweet. Bye, everybody. Great. Bye. Bye.